All right. Good to be back again and uh, yeah. in fellowship. So we got a good subject tonight. I think, uh, Dante, you're going to be talking, you want to wrap us or get started off with the itching ears is the subject matter for it to, for tonight. So uh, if you want to go ahead and uh, just, uh, you know, get us kicked off, we'll go I from there. I will do my best, I, I will try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so if, if, if some of you or many of you are kind of like me, you, you're always kind of watching and listening kind of what's going on in the world news reports, um, you're, you're listening to scripture, you're listening to the word of Yah. And uh, if if in, if in similarity to, to what I'm noticing nowadays, there seems to be a lot of, a lot of people um, anxious to hear these feel good messages. And thinking about it over, over the last couple of weeks, uh, the scripture that came to mind uh, was a scripture that, that oh. talks about or the context of it speaks to itching ears, and uh, instead of instead of yearning and seeking after the truth and and yearning after Yah, you know, people want to hear these messages that, in, in my purview, uh, just come across as, in some cases, clout chasing. In other cases, it's just a religious repetition. Um, in other cases, it's it's uh, a very conformed. Um, uh, message to the world and the world's systems. Uh, and, and the reason why I say that is because when there are, are, are messages preached or doctrines um, taught that don't receive uh, any type of opposition, um, you know, a lot of times those messages uh, don't receive that opposition because they are, they, they mirror or look a lot like what's acceptable uh, in the world. So, um, so tonight, uh, you know, the, the, the subject that I, um, am, am presenting to, to the brethren here is one of itching ears versus being led into all truth by the Holy Ruach, um, itching ears versus being led into all truth by the Holy Ruach. And so to kind of, uh, I guess, set the, the pace, I'm going to, uh, take a page out of D Max book and read from Second Timothy, chapter three. Um, I think I'm going to do the amplified uh, version uh, just for our hearing of uh, the classic edition. Uh, and so it says, "But understand this: that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered." lovers of money, and aroused by an inordinate greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. They will be without natural human affection, callous and inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce, haters of good. They will be treacherous, betrayers, rash and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of Yah. For although they hold a form of piety, true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belies the genuine genuineness of their profession of what all such people turn away from them so that's verse five where i'll conclude there's more but i'll just conclude there for now and um let one of the good brothers here kick it off yeah that's a powerful that's a powerful uh scripture and it, as you was reading that it just for me, it's just like this is what we're looking at now. You know, it, it out of all my life of of watching things go about in my lifetime, but we're at a peak that I've never seen before in what you just read. And so, so you know, and 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 when we talk about a form of godliness, that means it it looks like 
something religious. It, it sounds religious, but when you get to the meat of it, it's not religious. And then he said that it it denies the power of the Holy Rock to do a true change uh, in a person's life. So that's a it's a powerful scripture. Um, one of the things that reminds me of, and you know, is, is you know, I think it was in Second Kings when when uh, when King Jehoshaphat uh, went to the king of Israel. King of Je Jehoshaphat was king of Judah. Then he went to the to the king of Israel, and and they were trying to get some land back. I think uh, that that belonged to them. I think from the king of Syria, and. So you know Jehoshaphat, he he was he he didn't do anything without listening to a true prophet of of, of Yah. But the king of, of Israel didn't. He he just needed to hear. He just needed somebody to tell him some good news. So he brought in four hundred of his prophets, four hundred, and said, "What do y'all think? Should we go take this uh, land back from Syria?" All four hundred prophets said, "Yes, yeah, the Lord is going to deliver this into your hand." And the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, he's like, well, wait a minute. He said, do y'all have any other prophets around here that we can rely on? And they said, well, there's one prophet. And th think about this. this is one against 400, one prophet. And they brought Micah in. And they asked Micah, he said, man, why are you bringing this guy in? This was king of Israel. Why are you bringing this guy in? Because he never gives me good news. He never, he never says anything good about what's going to happen to me. Inching ears. Never says anything good. Not the truth, but he never says anything good. So, um, you know, make a long story short, Micah gives them bad news. So the king of, of, of Judah, Jehoshaphat, wouldn't go to war. But the king of Israel said, no, I'm listening to my prophets. We're going to go ahead. But then it switches scenes in that scripture. There's a scene in heaven. <laughs> And, you know, the Most High allows a lying spirit to come down to speak to those 400 prophets to tell the king a lie. He allows it. You know, he doesn't say go lie. But he said, who's going to go give a message? He, and a lying spirit. He said, I'm going to go speak lies to the to these people. And they believed the lie. And, and the king of Israel went into battle and lost his men. Lost his own life going into battle, listening to the itching ears. Yeah, yeah, I get what I'm saying. And so that what I'm what you know, what I'm seeing today is so strong because these people, you know, it's an election year and you got all these things going on. And and a lot of people believe what they're seeing. They believe everything certain people say. There's a lying spirit out there. It's coming from the pulpits. You know, the congregations are receiving it, but there's a lying spirit out there. And there's only a few people with the discernment, like Jehoshaphat, to be able to sit back and say, wait a minute, something's not right here. Because these people are convinced that they're, they're in the truth while living a lie at the same time. Anyway, that's, I just, that's just kind of what I'm seeing, uh, you know, uh, right now, that lying spirit has been released uh, especially in this country. Yo, Doc, I, I, I was laughing when you started talking about that because I was literally pulling that same scripture in the uh, first king. <laughs> literally pulling it up because I, I totally agree with you um, in, in, in what, what you shared uh, through the lens of that scripture. There's a very strong spirit out there. And because... The Most High allowed that spirit um, to go out and do what it do. Then we have to ask the question now uh, about what has the Most High allowed for now? Um, I mean, it's not catching him by surprise. It's not catching him off guard. You know, he's not up in heaven right now trying to come up with a contingency plan for all the lies that are out there. And another scripture that comes to mind for me is Matthew chapter 7, where it talks about the narrow and the straight gate. And, it, and, and we know that that wide gate, you know, everybody 
knows where that gate is. Everybody can get to it. But it says the narrow gate, few find it. And so we, 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 you know, at least for me, I have some clarification now on what's driving the masses to this wide gate and what's uh, preventing others, hopefully like me, you, and us, uh, for, you know, to that narrow gate so that we're not caught up in this, this, this nonsense that is out there because it is, it is crazy. And what baffles me is just how, how blatant it is. And the stuff that's coming out of their mouth, out of people's mouths, you know, I'm asking, did you even give any pause to stop and think about what's coming out of your mouth now to, to see that what you're saying is not even close to being right? Yeah. Or, uh, or you know, those that are hearing, are you giving any pause? Is there anything that's inside of you that's, that's, that's quickening? You say, that don't sound right. It don't feel right. Something, anything. Yeah, I mean, what you said, or, you know, when you said that the Most High is not surprised, he's not, he's not, you know, this is not something that happened and he's sitting up there and like, oh, I didn't expect this. So if that's the case, then that means he's allowing. Yeah. yeah. And we have to say, okay, if he's allowing this to happen, why is he allowing this to happen? And so, you know, when Dante was reading, he was talking about that the description, the pride, the arrogance, all of these things, all of these collective um, uh, signs or fruit, if you want to put it, of a different spirit that arises up in a people. And so you got to go back to the judgments before to see that right before judgment happened with these other nations, these are the same spirits mm -hmm. that were yeah. present before that fall. And so I just think that's a, that's a very important point you made along with, you know, many others that this is not surprising him and it should be an alarm to us. I mean, you, I'm, made, a, you made a good point. I'm sorry. I, go ahead, uh, go ahead. Uh, Elder, you made a good point. Um, later on in that same chapter, it talks about Janus and Jambres and how they resisted Moses. And what they did was the lie or the counterfeit to the the, the works uh, that the Most High did through Moses and Aaron, um, you know, they, it is it is it is interesting to me to witness this setup, how the Most High is is allowing these the, these lying spirits in the land. He's allowing all of this to take place, but it's to set up for the things that, that he has told us that are coming. It's, it, you know, just think about it. So if, if Janice and Jambers, if, we, if we're at the point when Janice and Jambers were trying to compete, in essence, with Moses, but they what they were doing was from the, the counterfeit of Yah, but people believed what they saw in them. They knew not the truth. Same thing here. In today's war, uh, time frame, people know not the truth. They are disinterested in the truth. And the things that are being... Um, shown, talked about, presented, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it kind of goes with um, being charismatic and having, uh, having charisma, but uh, no knowledge, you know, and, and I think it's in Romans, it talks about that, but we see a lot of that, and, you know, in, in the politics, in, in the churches, in the shows, uh, amongst our peers, nobody wants to sit down and listen to the truth because it doesn't feel good like the other stuff it doesn't it doesn't appease the flesh it doesn't appease the eyes it doesn't appease the the, the, the pride uh so you know if we're paying attention you know like you kendall i see this just as plain as day wherever i go i am seeing this and even even this morning had a chat with my daughter about her her slowfulness and being obedient so sometimes when mama says, go do something, she wants to take her time and daddy doesn't have the patience for that anymore. So, you know, it's, 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 it's I'm seeing it, but in my house, so, you know, it, there's an opportunity for me to correct it, but in the world, who's correcting it or is this the setup for what's to come? Mm -hmm. So I, I got to chime in on this guy. Then I'm, I'm, I'm about to have one of those, um, one of those moments that I never would admit it when I was younger that I that that I would have, and that's one of those old folks in my day 
<laughs> in my day, I could never imagine, honestly, at a time when I was growing up, as, as a young man, as a child and a young man, going to church and hearing scriptures and, um, you know, at that at that at that young age, you hear the scriptures, but I mean, do you really understand or believe what you're hearing? Not necessarily. You really don't. I mean, and even when I became a teenager and I was I was introduced more 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 heavily to scripture, and I, I there was a part of me that believed, and there was a part of me that needed help with its unbelief, so to speak. And so when I would read scriptures like the one we're reading now. It was really hard for me. I mean, we could look at, I could look at my the the, the my my elders, and they would come. They would say, you know, I can't believe these youth today, and I and the things they're doing. But honestly, when you consider where we have where we have digressed as a nation, as a people, as people, period, from the nineteen seventies to right now. It, uh, who could have imagined being able to look at these scriptures so vividly and identify exactly what the scriptures were saying in the moment? Right. You understand? And so when I look at this passage of scripture and I see I'm reading it, I'm, I'm reminded that, that the scriptures themselves are pinpoint accurate. There's there there is no no ambiguity in what we read here when you look at the details of with the nate the nature of the, of 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 the human nature the thinking of human nature and how it would have declined to a place where these things were the norm among society so much of what we're reading here at the time even when I was a young man going up this was not the norm but we have become. We are, the, the nations have become accustomed to this kind of behavior. This is the kind of stuff that our children, they, 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 they log on to computers and, and get onto phones to entertain themselves with. We see this as, in, this is seen as entertainment today. But when I was growing up, and I know it sounds, I know it sounds antiquated, but when I was growing this stuff would have been appalling. And so I'm not I'm not making the comparison between my day and this day. I'm saying the scriptures are dead spot on. And when when I look at a path, what, what stands out to me about that passage, Dante, it says in verse four, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fable. And 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 Kendall, you you made the point of asking, well. Why is the Most High taking this position? Why is the Most High allowing this spirit, these spirits, to overtake and and and, and the, the, the 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 social norms? And I couldn't help but think about the sister scripture. Every time I read this scripture, I always go back to Romans chapter one. And in Romans one eighteen, it says, "For the wrath of Yah is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness." And unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. It implies that there is there is a a a a, 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 a not just a mindset, but there are people, individuals who know the truth, not a truth, not some truth. They know the truth of a scripture. They know it. They know that the Most High is who he says he is. They know that he has delivered his people from one similar circumstance like the, as, this, as, as they are finding themselves in now before, from before. They know that the scriptures, as I just mentioned earlier, are pinpoint accurate. They know it, but they hold the truth. They strangle the truth. They cover up the truth. They closet and lock the truth up in the spirit of unrighteousness. And so the most highs, the most highs remedy for this is okay. I mean, this is how I'm, 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 I'm being facetious, but okay. Is that what you want to do? If you're going to, you're going to bottle up the truth like that, and you're going to, you're, you're just going to allow this 
your, your own wickedness to become so wicked that I have no choice other than break. I got to break this thing because the stronghold is so, is so hard. I got to break it. And so what does he allow to happen at that point? The very things that we see happening in, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and in Romans chapter 1 from 18. You look at all the, you look at the breakdown of how the most, I won't get into it, but you look at the breakdown of what the most high is judging. And you realize, I realize at least at that point, I realize the most high, when yeah. it comes to truth, there mm -hmm. is only one truth. It is not subjective. It is not objective. It is truth, period. And so the, I, I, in my mind, I, I, I see where we are right now in the, in the answer to your question, a, a partial answer to your question, um, Kendall and Dante, is the most sin has gone to the extreme. It's so extreme that the most high has got to go to the extreme. I, all, you all have heard me say it, say it before. Sin is aggressive. And so we have to deal with sin aggressively and so the father's got to deal with sin aggressively as well that's my take on it yeah I, uh, yeah I, I mean what you were saying was when you went back to the 70s and you said <laughs> the, the, the egregiousness of it all <laughs> it, it, it's just like okay so we we go back we go back to the 70s we're on the heels of the death of a preacher mm -hmm. yeah y'all hear what i'm saying the death of a preacher, the death of a right of one who would be considered righteous, even by you know by either congregation, the Eurocentric, the, the Black Church, the who or whatever, worldwide considered to be, you know, a righteous man, not a perfect man, not a you know not without fault, but a righteous man. And because of what he was trying to accomplish, they killed him. All right, so. The consciousness, and this is what is so egregious about what's going on right now, because the consciousness of right and wrong was heightened after those little girls got killed in the church, after, you know, uh, Malcolm X, after Martin Luther King was killed, after, you know, uh, all of the other lynchings and all of these things that were happening and, and, and everybody, the whole world got to see the dogs being turned. The consciousness of America was raised to what's right and what's wrong. And even today, they quote Martin Luther King every year. The consciousness, going back to Romans 1, you, you're aware of it by your own words. You're, you're aware of what's right and you're aware of what's wrong. And so now, after you're aware of that righteousness that you were talking about after you have been made aware of what's right and wrong after this, you still double mm -hmm. down. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that, saying, yeah, that, that's powerful. That's powerful. It is. Yeah. It is. Doc. And I'm just sitting there listening to, to D Mac and listening to you, Kendall and listening to Hank and, all of you all are, are speaking to exactly what's happening now. We may not have the actual Janice and Jambres in front of us, but we have renditions of them before us when we see that, that, that these people are hostile and they resist the truth and they oppose the truth and they have depraved and distorted minds and are reprobate and counterfeit. And then, and, and then as far as the faith is, is concerned, they speak a form of it, but they aren't talking the truth they aren't speaking it sounds like it but they inter, inter, interweave into it all these these different charismatic characteristics and things that that we're used to seeing we've been exposed to it for so long that even when someone says listen let me show you i used to believe that too let me let me let me show you the difference they will hold on to that that tradition they will hold on to the thing that that they have been exposed to and a part of for their whole lives, forsaking the truth. But scripture speaks to it. There will, there will only be a remnant in the, in these days. Um, you know, that is, that is the truth. You know, D Mac, you said it, you said it, you know, it's just speaking directly to what exactly is going on right now. Second Timothy three, 
uh, what is it, Luke 21. I said it in the first, I think the first meeting we had. Others, Matthew 24, they're all speaking to what we are seeing, not what's coming, not what y'all is getting ready to do, what is going on right now. But Dante, my ears still itch, bro. I'm not gonna give you anything to fix your itch. You might need my, some. My, my, my ears, my ears, my ears is still my my ears still itch because because I, I I'm not feeling what you're saying. So check this out. I, I, so, hang on, hang on, hold that thought. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm not I'm not feeling what you're saying. I I see this word and I and I believe portions of it. I I I, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I I believe that He died for my sins. I mean. Isn't that, isn't that enough? I mean, what more do I need? I mean, honestly, it, it, my ears are still itching because there's some other things that I want to do, accomplish. There's other, this other mindset. I have a, this, I, my, my mind is not, uh, listen, the, the Lord Jesus understands, doesn't he? He understands. <laughs> I, I, I like this. I like this, D-Mac. So, he, uh, it, so 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 to so to your itching ears, think about this. We all came in this through the matrix. And the, the whole system has programmed us to look for certain feelings, to look for certain emotional ties to what's what we're being told and what we're what we're exposed to. We're looking to we're looking through carnal eyes, we're looking through our flesh. We're looking through the things that don't matter to the most. We're not. We're not looking through it with with the Holy Spirit, and and, and we're we're not seeking understanding through the Holy Spirit. So yes, through the programming of our whether it's thirty years, forty years, fifty years, through the programming of the world's systems and of the world that has been deceived by Satan, through the programming, we have been programmed to have itching ears, no matter where we are. We could be at work. We could be at at uh, church. We could be uh, outside at, at a cookout. We want something that makes us feel a certain way. We want that's what we're programmed for. So when we hear something that contradicts that or that opposes that, when we hear the truth that opposes all the things that we think we know and have learned over the years, when we hear the truth that starts being, a, it becomes a little bit of abrasive, and it starts poking at part of you that like, oh. They don't feel too good because it shines light on a dark place in you when you hear the truth. And it, and it, and it removes whatever's causing the itch in your ears. And you're like, well, this feels different. This is not what I'm used to. I'm not used, I, I'm not used to, you know, hearing hearing a word that's, that's so profound that it makes me go to sleep with it on my mind and wake up with it on my mind and meditate on it. And then actually, you know, I, it's it's so deep that I, I'm like, okay, I need, I need to find more information about it. We don't, there's only a remnant that does that now because everybody is programmed to, to scratch the itch. And that you know, goes according, according to scripture, <clears throat> it, uh, at least the way I'm seeing it, there's something else that happened before the matrix. You know, the, the matrix is a response. You know, us, us being programmed is, is actually a response to something that happened before. And, you know, you look at this, it says in verse three, for time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves the matrix, the teachers, the people that are just going to continue to feed this thing that they want. And so when we look at verse four, if we if we read that thing slowly, we can see the injection of this deceptive spirit in that verse. Because it starts out and it says, and they, the same ones who reap for themselves, heap them to themselves, teach because of their own lust, it says, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And then the language changes and it says, and, sh and shall be turned unto, it doesn't say they, Turn unto fables is they they shall be turned unto fables, and so this in this 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 spirit was injected in between the lust and our unwillingness to uh you know to be aware and pay attention to the, our desires that were against the Most High 
He said, okay, you don't want to listen? I got something for you. He turns to that spirit and said, I'll do it, boss. I'll do it. Let me, let me, boss, let me. He said, all right, go do it. And, 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 and now the matrix is here, and it is just simply feeding that thing that we want to hear because we refuse to uh, acknowledge our own lust and turn away from it. That makes sense. Yeah. It goes yeah. back to what uh, DMAC was saying in Romans 1. He gives them over. Yes. To a reprobate spirit. That in between that you were talking about is, you know, just not to have the reprobate based spirit is grace, the grace and mercy of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And when we refuse that, you know, it, so let's look at, let's, based on what you're saying, let's look a little bit inward then at, at, at us, us more as a, as, a, as a people. I'm gonna throw this out there and see what, what, what you think about it. The, the unawareness of who we are directly affects how we interpret scripture. Yep. Totally agree. Be, be, because, you know, and, and then even when we know who we are, we still, some of us don't want to interpret scripture correctly. So I got to put both, both, both groups in there. So you got one group that don't know who they are, so you can't interpret scripture directly. And then you got those who have itch and ears in our community that even when you show them something, they don't want to hear. And what do I mean? Well, what I'm saying is there are direct uh, things that Yah says to his people. And he tells us specifically that, that are going to happen to us and that we won't be able to overcome on our own. So we get to Deuteronomy 28, last verse, Deuteronomy 20, uh, 28. And he, and well, not the last, but the last few verses, and he talks about no one's going to buy you. Mm -hmm. No one is going to redeem you. No one is going to get you out of your situation. That's him. That's his declaration. That I just said. He said it. But yet you see us as a people scheming, coming up with ways, starting groups of how, you know, what what what's our economic plan? What can we do here? What can we do there? And we're so deceived as a people that we think that we can come up with government program, we can come up with these things to overcome a curse that Yah himself put on us. I, I want you to think about how egregious that is as, as a people. Now, once we don't know who we are and we say it doesn't matter, go back to the doesn't matter thing, because if it doesn't matter, you don't realize that there's something that applies to you and a whole group of people that you'll never be able to overcome, but you think you can overcome it because you have that itching ear and that lying spirit up on you. Why? Because you're cursed and you don't know who you are. Yeah, but Kendall, in the words of D-Mac, they don't feel good to hear that. Don't feel good. They don't feel good to hear that. I mean, I mean, it, I, I'm not feel, you know, I'm not feeling that. You know, that 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 doesn't make me uh excited you know it, it it doesn't it doesn't feed my ego <laughs> well you know there's a there's an old uh saying it was an activist years ago and uh anyway uh she was quoted as saying something similar to this and, I, and and so if i don't get it exactly right it said we can ignore uh we can ignore the current events or we can ignore uh, the things that are going on, but we can never ignore the consequences of ignoring what's right. going on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I get what I'm saying. So, as, as a people, you, you know, we can ignore, or we can uh, not study it, or we can pretend like I don't want to hear that, or we can say, or what, whatever decision that we make, we still cannot ignore the consequences of ignoring the, the the present circumstances yeah. so um yeah you, you know we don't want to hear it yeah, so he, he he creates he creates circumstances to yeah to to get our attention you know and anyway. here, we, here we are seeing multiple multiple different types of renditions of i will think about that so I, I want to. I mean, well, I'm sorry. I'll go ahead. I apologize. No, you good. Um, just we we see that, and and the I wills, you know, it has every. It, it they all have something to do with exalting oneself mm -hmm. 
above everything. What I want, what I see, what I envision, you know, my my uh, my ambitions, my goals, my purpose. I mean, it's all self centered, and it's and it's just and 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 that self centeredness and that self that self absorption is a mirror of the counterfeit of Yah. Yeah, I think that's powerful. I'm trying to find the eye wheels that the Most High gave us when he was getting ready to bring us out of Egypt. He gave us, I think, five eye wheels. Yep. And he told us what he was going to do. Uh, and then there's a different set of eye wheels that you're yep. you're referring to. And I just want I I just want anybody to listen to understand what what you're what you're saying where you're getting that scripture from um i know the eye wheels that um dante is talking about i think you see that in isaiah 14 or isaiah 12 yeah yeah so let me find what uh yeah i said i would deliver isaiah 14 uh that well to hang that isaiah 14 that's yeah. So somebody find that. I'm gonna find the one in uh, Exodus, and then we're gonna, you, you know. There. Yeah, that's in uh, Lucifer. Ex um, that's a uh, Isaiah 14 uh, starts at 12, verse 12. All right. So I'm gonna go to. All right. This this is what the Most High has, has has said when he was bringing us out of Egypt, Exodus six chapter. And he said in verse six, he said, "Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am uh, Yahuwah. I will bring you out from out. I, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians." He didn't put us in there. He said, "This is what he's going to do. I will bring you out." Then he says, "I will rid you out of that bondage." And he says it again, "I will redeem you with a stressed out arm." And with great judgments. Then he says that I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a Elohim. Y'all get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Y'all see that's that's what he's going to do. He he doesn't put me in there, what I'm going to do, what my tasks are. He's laying the foundation and saying, I don't want you to take no credit for this. This is all me. Then Lucifer comes along, who's got Isaiah pulled up? I do. Okay, read read what the eye wheels that 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 Lucifer has. It says um in starting in um Isaiah chapter fourteen verse twelve it says how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which this weakened the nations for thou hast said in thine heart I will ascend into heaven I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yah. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So we got two different sets of our wheels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we got to decide which one of those sets of our wheels that we fall under. And Lucifer's our wheels, boy, they appeal to those itching ears. Right. Mm -hmm. They appeal to the itching ears. If you're just, if you're just, uh, you know, just come and worship me, I, I give you the whole kingdom. Y you know, uh, you know. Why don't you, if you be the son of the Most High, why don't you just turn that stone to bread? I know you're hungry. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All these things that sound good is under the eye wheels of Lucifer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I was uh, uh, in the um, old book alert. You're, you're gonna like this, D Mac. <laughs> old book alert. Uh, was it was in the apocalypse of Cedric or Shadrach, however you pronounce that. And w one of the things that stood out to me was how uh, uh Shadrach, Shadrach, you know, how do you pronounce that? Anybody know? Shadrach, 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 Shadrach. Mm -hmm. he was one of the three Hebrew boys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things that really impressed upon me, he was asking Most High, he said, why, why, why don't you just, why do you allow this stuff to happen? Why don't you just deliver your people? Why don't you just prevent all this stuff 
from happening. And, and as you were reading those five I wills, Kendall, um, you know, we get some insight as to who the Most High is and why he allows this stuff to happen. Why would he allow his people to be deceived? I mean, he he is you know, he has said very clearly, you are my people. You are the apple of my eye. And then he goes on, he he gives us these five I wills, and then giving us these five I wills, he gives us this very intimate insight as to who he is. I am a deliverer. I am a redeemer. Mm. I am, uh, I was, I, I, well, I, I, I can't even follow this. Uh, I am, I am the Lord. I will bring you out. So I, I'm a deliverer. I will redeem you. I'm a redeemer. I will take you. He's going to claim us. Um, I will be your Elohim. Uh, I will know that and you will know that. So he, we, we get this insight as to who he is. And so in order for him to be who he is, he has to let us get into these situations. Yep. So he can be who he is. Yep. Hey, he, you know, how, how do you deliver us from anything when we ain't in nothing? Right. Yep. How do you redeem us from something? <laughs> if we don't, if you don't put us, allow us to be put into a situation where you have to come in and redeem us. I mean, so we 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 got we got to understand, you know, his point of view. I mean, we talked about this a couple of weeks about what wisdom. And I told you, I believe wisdom is just being able to see from his point of view. And when we see all this deception that's going on and that's happening right now, we have to know, man. Yah is a bad dude. <laughs> it's a bad dude <laughs> to allow this stuff to happen and to. Get Satan and all of his minions to believe they won. And he shows up like Yahushua did down in, in the lower parts. Yeah. <laughs> who is the <laughs> who, who, who is the king of glory? <laughs> who is this king of I mean, think about think about that, Hank. Just from the command of his voice, uh -huh. they were terrified. Terrified. He went to the lower parts. Open the gates. Open up the gates. Oh, the everlasting doors. <laughs> they were terrified. It was like, and who was it? One of the governors of hell and, and uh, the, 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 the Nicodemus. He was yeah. like, if it's by his voice, these yeah. ancient chains can break. I don't want to see them. <laughs> it, it got it got so it got so rough down there. Death looked at Satan and said, What have you done? What did you what do? Did what did you do? do? <laughs> Don't I think it. you've been doomed. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, what did you that's do? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what that. says. If they had known what they were doing, they would have never crucified. Yeah. They wouldn't have done it. <laughs> and, never. And so you, 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 this deception has to take place. It has to. Uh, for him to redeem us with this outstretched arm, the way he says he's going to do it, it has to happen. I, I got to chime in here because you all are touching on two points and I, I, that I just got to get to. So, you know, we've been talking about itching ears and the fact that they're going to turn, people will turn their ears from the truth to listen to faith. The truth. We go into uh, uh, John. When you look at John chapter 18 and verse 37, this is Yeshua being, being um, inquisitioned in front of Pilate. He's being interviewed. And Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest I'm a king. <laughs> to this end I was born. For this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Amen. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate's answer was to, Pilate's question is Pilate said unto him, What is true? I dare say Pilate asked the wrong question. Yes. Pilate yes. shouldn't have asked what is true. <laughs> Pilate should have been asking, Who is truth? He should have been asking, Who is truth? Because truth 
The truth that's being turned away from that we read in scripture, it has nothing to do with what truth is. It has everything to do with who truth is. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Not my words, Yeshua's words. Well, that's relevant. That's relevant even today because not, not only people are talking about what truth. But they're talking about your truth, my truth, my our truth. truth. Mm -hmm. Who the truth is. Who? <laughs> who? Who is the truth? It's not what the truth is. It's who the truth right. is. And so when the lie has become so pervasive, since the lie has become so, so, so invasive, the idea, the question is not to ask what is truth? Who's telling me the truth? The question is, where is the, who is the truth? And how do I find him? Because right now we're looking at a situation and we all know what the political scene is. There are, for Israel, there are no winners. It doesn't matter who who's in and who's out. For true Israel, we are, there are no winners for us. I don't care what side you've chosen. The Most High has set this up on purpose. My wife and I were having this conversation this week. We were on our way down to, another, to, to South Carolina. And as we were in South Carolina, I'm seeing all these Dixies everywhere. I'm looking, I see Dixie. Gun. It's like Dixie paved the whole road. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, oh my, sweet Lord in heaven. We don't, there is, there, for us, there is no choice other than the most high. Which leads me to the point I want to make about what we talked about when the most high said, uh, what we read here in, in, in Exodus chapter 6, most high is I will. And when we look at the most highest I wills, it's so desperately important for us, as you were saying, Kendall, what good is it to know the not to, to not have the knowledge of who we are or to have the knowledge of who we are and still misinterpret the scriptures? But when you look at the scriptures and you see what the most high is saying there, we have only been taught to see ourselves as outsiders from that passage of scripture. And so we'll never be able to see the full, broad, bird's eye view of what the Most High meant when he was talking about Egypt and how he was going to bring us out. Why do I say that? Turn over to to, uh, to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter, chapter 23. It says here in chapter 23, verse 5, it says, Behold, the days come, saith Yah, that I will raise unto David, unto, unto, the, unto Yah, that I will, I'm sorry, forgive me, say, say of Yah, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. That hasn't happened yet. Okay, let's look at this. He says, in his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. That hasn't happened yet. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the, the Lord, our righteousness, Yah, our righteousness. He said, therefore, behold, look at this, y'all. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yah, that they shall no more say, Yah liveth, which brought us, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yah liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. And from all the countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophet. Think about what the Most High is saying here. Everything he said in Exodus chapter 9, that was a dress rehearsal. But the prophecy is when the Most High pulls his people, not out of that Egypt that we that we read about when they first went through. He said, you're not even, the day is coming. We're not even going to talk about that. We're going to we're going to be so blown away by what the Most High does and how He manifests His power among His people throughout all the nations that He scattered us. How He forces and breaks open the bars of the cages that we're in and tears us out of those places and brings us into our land. How He tear utterly just ruins those lands. We're not even good. thinking about Egypt the first time when He messed with that hard headed Pharaoh. That's not even going to come to mind. He hasn't done that yet. And so when we when we read these scriptures and we see what the Most High is saying he's going to do, even back in Exodus, we have to keep in mind, guess what? He really hasn't done exactly what he's going to what he said he's going to do as yet. We have something to look forward to.
We have something to we have something to soothe and satisfy our itching ears if we will just turn ourselves not toward what the truth is, but who the truth is. I'm done. Yeah, I mean that that's that's powerful. Yeah, you know, it, and there's just several points that you made that you know that we could just dwell on. That you know, number one, when you were talking about Judah shall be saved in Israel to, to, to dwell safely. He says that's not going to happen until I come back as king. Precisely. Precisely. Right. So now when we study scripture, when we study the book of Revelation, when we study all these things and people coming up with all these things about when we're going, you know, you know, when he's going to, you know, bring us back into our positions, we know now, or we should, if we believe scripture, but you're going to have somebody come along and just say something, out, you know, just say anything. And our people are going to believe it because they're just going to ignore us, you know, the prophecies in the scripture. And then, you know, he talks about that he is the one that spread us out. He said, I'm bringing you back, but I'm the one th th that sent you out. You know, it, it was my, you know, I'm responsible for that. So, yeah, there's a lot in there that you, that you say it, you know, uh, it's, that we really have to take to heart, you know, when we read these scriptures. No, he's taking full responsibility, you know, for, for everything that's, that's happening. And he's saying this for our sake and you know, for we're, his we're, name's we're sake. Not, we're not giving the most high enough credit. Mm -mm, we're not. No, we're not. I mean, we're he, not. I think it's, I think it's in, you know, you know, first Corinthians somewhere. It talks about there, there are differences of operations, but the same Elohim works in all. Mm -hmm. he, he, he is the, Chief operating officer, he knows how everything works, should work. You know, he he is the the impetus behind it. He's the reason behind behind it. He, he is the cause of it. You know, he he understands all of a sudden. We're not giving him enough credit. We're not. I mean, I was I was reading uh, Wisdom of Solomon, and he was. I mean, he was just laying this thing down. I mean, track by track by track by. That's just powerful Wisdom of Solomon. It was in the park. And um, man, he got to the point where he he started talking about those bad things that were happening to us in the wilderness and all these things. And he would he would, he would specify what was happening. He would say, "But this was happening, so you could get a taste <laughs> of the wrath of the Most High." He said, "This wasn't nowhere close to the wrath of the Most, but but I'm letting these things happen by wisdom, so that you can get a taste." And then he said, "I'm I'm allowing your enemy to have time." And grace, even though they're never going to take advantage, he said they're not going to take advantage of it. He said, "But, but for your sake, I want you to see it. I want you to see how much grace and time I'm giving them. I want you to see that, and I want you to taste a little bit of of the wrath, so that you'll turn back to me, so I can give you the promises that I got for you. And I want you to be able to see that no matter how much grace and how much time I gave them, they refuse to change. So this whole idea then of time that we don't understand in his own wisdom he said i got a purpose for all these things yeah. uh, and i'm doing it my way so that there won't be any uh you know uh accusations at the end of the day that i didn't do this thing the right way you know it's powerful man it's powerful Amazing. absolutely you know d mac you mentioned something earlier uh with knowing who the truth is and, and that resonates, you know, uh, profoundly with me because we we are seeing so much delusion with different renditions of of narratives. Now, I'm not going to even call them truths; they're just narratives um, that seem to be fear based, you know, and and and, and manipulative. And so there there's there's this this undertone of manipulation in what we think we're hearing, but it, it, what it boils down to is people are refusing to know who the truth is and getting to know who the truth is and building a relationship with who the tr truth is. And then realizing that the truth is from one source and that the truth is living, that the truth has been, that the truth will be, that the truth does not contradict itself. People, people's itching ears have caused them to turn from the truth. And that's what we're seeing so much of today. But it goes to the point made earlier that the Most High 
allows this to happen, to set it up for knocking it out the park. Big time. Uh, big time. Big time. Big. So, Ken, uh, 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 let me let me let me tag on to that real real quick, Dante. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, "I am Christ," and shall deceive me. The truth matters. The truth is a person. It's a person. It's the the truth is not an idea. It's not an. It, it's a person. Someone, the person who originated all truth is the person that we're talking about. It's Yeshua. He's he's a person. And so I, I, I'm emphasizing that because, because there are many out there, and we we just shared, the, Kendall, you just shared a video of those who believe they know the truth. Those who sit up in the pulpit and disparage and say what it, all manner of stuff to their own disinterest and not, not, not even knowing it. To their own disinterest in the name of fill in the blank. See, knowing who the truth is is critical. And therefore, we have to be, it's, it's important to be mindful. See to it that no man deceive you. If you don't, if you will not acknowledge the ethnicity, the known ethnicity, the look and the color as described by the scriptures of who Yeshua was and is. And, and how he showed up on the scene, are you dealing with the truth? Are you addressing the truth when you address in such and such name? Are you really delving and uh, adhering to the truth? Because if you're refusing to deny something as basic, let's talk about this. This is basic. This is the base level of who he is. And that is how, what kind of flesh he chose to come in. Whose flesh he chose to come through. Now we understand that the flesh counts for nothing, but his flesh was sinful, sinless flesh. His flesh counted for everything when it comes to, when it comes to our salvation. It was untainted. He was the perfect lamb of Yah. So if you are going to say, I trust in the perfect lamb of Yah, are you not responsible to acknowledge at least, at least the fleece in which he came in, at least for truth's sake? If you are still willing to superimpose another image on top of that or another description on top of the one that's, that the scriptures describe as he came, are you really holding to who the truth is or are you letting a man deceive you? Just a question for the panel. I'm asking for a friend. Yeah, but yeah, well, that's what he said. If you're gonna worship, you gotta worship me in spirit and in truth. And in truth. Okay. Then he said, <laughs> then he talks about uh man should not live by bread alone, but by what every word that proceeds right. out the mouth of the most high. So if his description is part of the word that proceeds out the most high, and you're not living by that. But 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 Kendall, but Kendall, but Kendall, I tithe, I I, I give to the poor. Hold on, my ears are itching. I tie, I give to the poor. I look after my friends. You know, anybody asks me for, for, for help, I'm I'm ready to give. I come out of my pocket. They come stay in my home. Whatever. You know, I, I love him. I, I, I love him. What so, do you mean? So so then self-justification. Mm -hmm. So so it goes, it goes right back to what that, that preacher who who admonished the entire black population. Oh. The whole black population, he came out and said, he rebuked us in the name of Jesus. This is what he said. He said, because he said, y'all support a party that does this, this, and this. So by default, what he was saying was that his, his party was the righteous party. His party was the holy party. His party, you had to vote for it if you represented righteousness. When the truth of the matter is, neither party is righteous. Right. Show, six, me, show me. Show me. Show me the scripture. Six hundred and thirteen laws that the scripture talks about that man must follow in order to proclaim his own righteousness. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you're guilty of one of them, you're guilty of all of them. This preacher got up in front of the whole world and named five things. <laughs> 
Yeah. And he still got 608 to go. <laughs> that his party wow. has to hold up in order to claim righteousness. Self so righteousness. He, he judged us. He did. Based upon righteousness. Based upon that five point righteousness that he has. Just a whole people rebuked us. Sure did. Not knowing that the same judgment that he just put on the whole group of people is coming right back to him. Swiftly. Y'all y'all uh, get y'all see what I'm saying? And I so they're teaching, ahead, yeah, they're teaching a righteousness that doesn't that doesn't hold up to what scriptural righteousness is. Teaching filthy rags. <laughs> when the scriptures are clear that he said you read in one scripture that Yah himself is our righteousness. So I just, want, I just want to know question for you. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just want to know where in scripture it does it tell us that some type of man-made political system that one side is what Yah wants us to, to, to support and vote for versus the other. Wait a minute, bro. Let me let me search my old books real quick. My, my ears, my, <laughs> my ears are itching. My ears are itching for that answer. It's it's the same one that justified the death of 200 million people in the name of Jesus from 1500s all the way up until the founding of this country who they say were by Christians, but when you read the writings of the founding father, most of them were not even believers. Yep. Yep. But anyway, go ahead, Hank. You had you had something that you were going to say. Yeah, Um. but Dante then got me going down for this question. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> But you know, you, you, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go back to what I was originally gonna say. But we got two parties, and it's almost like okay, you know, they they went to the box of sin, and they each took out, you know, you know, you know, the sins that they were comfortable with, and so all right, this is gonna be our platform. You take out yours, it's gonna be your platform. We're, now we're gonna force the people to uh, vote on what sins they think is the least between the two. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. It's like. It's like, you know, you know, I use myself as an example. You know, I've never been attracted to another man. It's just, it just never, I never looked at a man and said, ooh, it just, it just never hit me, you know. And so, you know, I don't have that tendency. So it would be like, I'm going to make this rule, you know, that, you know, uh, you know, if, 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 you know, as long as you're not uh, attracted to another man, you know, then you you can be righteous, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. But I didn't tell nobody that I, I got attractions to other women that's not doesn't belong to me, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're, you know, yep. they're twelve twelve years and, and younger. <laughs> well, you don't know that. <laughs> You don't know about that. Yeah. But I hear what you're saying. Yeah. All these all these secrets. All right, yeah. let, me, let me look. So, you know, so I, I, I want to say something real quick here. So you have a left wing and a right wing of the same evil bird. You have an evil wing and an evil wing carrying the same evil bird. But yet people have rationalized picking one over the other based on what 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 righteous standard are they are they finding wrapped up in unrighteousness I, I don't know Dante. I, I, Dante, I, I, th I think you might be at the wrong rally you might want to go to the smaller one down the street <laughs> the smaller one. Go to the smaller one down the street. I, gotta, I gotta go down the street so that way <laughs> 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 I, I, mean, I just want to put it out there you know the, the argument of picking the lesser of two fill in the blank is no argument when it comes to righteousness when it comes to Yahusha being our righteousness it, there is no argument in picking evil no 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 measure of it no lesser of it no 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 nothing there there is no excuse that we can give no rationalization that we can give to justify that picking evil somehow, some way is the right thing to do. 
Right. And so what we have to do as a people is ask, you know, how what do you want me to do? Absolutely. Because he because he's the one. He said it in his word. I put kings up, I take kings down. Yeah. And he tells us some of the ones that he put up was evil. So if if the people who voted in the king are evil, which they could be, I, I, you know, and Yah is taking credit for putting them in office. What what conclusion are we getting to here? Right. The aging years of voting. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So he puts me in. So I don't, you know, like I said, I never tell anybody not to vote. Because I don't know what Yah is telling them to do. I don't know how he's managing his his systems to say this is how we're going to get them in office. I'm going to send a line spirit over here to this many people. And I'm going to send another spirit over here to these people. And I'm going to have them vote one way and have them vote another way in order to achieve my will. I, I don't know how he's going to do it. So I would, if, if, if most I give you the unction to do it, I just want us to walk in wisdom when we do it and understand I, that if we do it, that's not our answer. Right. Precisely. That's, that's what I was going to share. Huh? Is that, you know, you're given this, you're given this. No one looks at who's giving it. First of all, who's the one that's giving this? Who what's, wh Where is this choice coming from, mm -hmm. right? Why is the system set up in this way? And truly, is your choice really, really a vibe? Is it really a choice that's, that 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 the system is is obligated to honor? It's really not. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the electoral college. The electors can flip a popular vote in whatever favor they choose to at any given time. Uh, one of the candidates just recently got on on a on a program and and said, um, the, uh, "I'm going to win. I'm I'm going to win." And was said with such confidence that it really made me think, mm, "What's what? You know, maybe maybe that is going to be the case." So the question then becomes, what does our participation as the people of the book, whether, whether we're participating in ignorance, which is the vast majority of us, or, or, or whether we're participating out of fear, or even if we're participating with, participating with the full knowledge of who we are in scripture, the question then becomes, how is what I'm doing or not doing affecting not just the system, but how is this, how is what I'm doing or not doing being viewed, as you said, in the eyes of the Most High? And is it real? I mean, the Most High is going to take everything. It says all things work together. <laughs> so he's going to use the good, he's going to use the bad, he's going to use the ugly, he's going to use all, all that stuff is going to come together to make his masterpiece. I, how, I, how, I have no idea, but I do know it's going to be one that we are all going to stand in awe of one day in eternity, whether in heaven or hell, <laughs> you know. You know I, 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 I ponder that, and 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 the conclusion that I, I, I come to quite often when we ask that question is: number one, do I believe that he puts that he puts the king in or not? You know, how big of a fool am I going to act if 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 he don't put my guy in there? You know, I'm just saying in general, if, if, you know, how, you know, if, if for some reason, let's say for as us as a people, if Trump get put back in there, how willingly will we accept as a people corporately to say, you know, Yah's will is done. You get what I'm saying? That all things are working for the good, them, the love, the love. Even, even though he put this person in, all things are still working. Mm -hmm. That there's something in this that he wants to get out of this situation for his people. Do I trust that? Mm -hmm. Though he slay me, yet yeah, I trust him. With, 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 yeah, I get what I'm saying. So this level of of faith that he's trying to get us to is is going to require situations. That we don't find favorable. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, and then while they're unfavorable, we still trust. Yes. Yeah. 
Like David said, uh, the, you know, the Lord is my rock and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Mm -hmm. The Lord is the strength of my life and whom shall I be afraid? And so, you know, you, 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 you have to get into a situation in order to make proclamations like that. Mm -hmm. the, the most high has to allow us to be in situations so he can be our salvation. So he can be our deliverer. So he can show us that we don't have to be afraid. And, and, and going back to, you know, DMAC's comment earlier about we, we have to know who the truth is. And so no matter what happens around the ballot box, are we going to go back and look to the hills from where our help comes, knowing all our help comes from the Most High? If, if, if we don't do that, then we have to know he is going to send a deceptive spirit. He's going he's gonna to feed this thing that we're hoping for, that we're clinging to, that we're we're embrace. He's going to keep feeding that thing, and all he's doing, he's setting us up to be our salvation. Mm -hmm. He's setting us up to deliver us. I mean, that's that's who. Now, yeah, I, of course, uh, I was going to ask you earlier, <laughs> and, and, and it's connected to this. What is it about our flesh versus that of Yeshua's? Because you know, Demac, you said earlier, he he, you know, he his flesh was sinless, but his flesh wasn't no different from ours. <laughs> it was the same flesh, but somehow in his flesh, when he was a young lad, he's sitting up in the church looking at his mom and saying, "I don't know why you stressing over me. You have to know I know I I'll be about my father's business." What, what is it about our flesh that prevents us from knowing who our father is and being about his business? Because in, in him understanding who he was at such a young age, he, you know, he, 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 he was able to overcome the lust of his flesh so that he was not given to a deceptive spirit. And he was able to go on and live a sinless life um, uh, for us and for the, the purposes of the father. Yeah, but I, I don't Go ahead. No, go, ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm good. I was just saying you you hit it. You hit it, bro. I mean that that particular aspect. I think is what you said. It said, but after their own lusts, you know, scripture is very clear that. And this really, this really freed me up when I when I really be when I read this and just ingested this this scripture. It says that 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 Yeshua was tempted. At all points as men are, and yet without sin. That, Why though? Why? <laughs> Cause we, so we gotta know. We gotta know. <laughs> that helped me so much when I read he was tempted like me. He dealt with the same deal that I'm dealing with. It said, but he was without sin. He managed to, he managed to pull off. What I had long failed to do, because <laughs> when the temptation hit me, my lust took over. Lust of the eyes, the pride of life, all that, it took over. But when I recognized that I had, when I read that scripture, I recognized I still had hope. That I didn't have to fall. I didn't have to give in. I didn't have to fail and all the time. <laughs> it didn't mean I, I stopped failing. It just means that I, he showed me that if I can do it, I've given you my spirit that you can do it too. And even if you fail, when you fail and fall on your face, you can get up. Mm -hmm. You can call on me for forgiveness. I will forgive you. And you will get and, and you can move on. You don't don't wallow. Don't stay there. And so when it comes to what was it about his flesh, bro? I just the spirit of Yah and his love and desire for Yah just overrode the temptations I believe that he was dealing with. And I listen, I mean think about it. I mean, there were women when Jesus came up, you know, there was all kinds he was still, he was tempted. And so when I read that in scripture, that helped me out so much because I recognize that, you know, what the, what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing from the pulpit and from the, and from the, from 
Catholicism and all this other stuff about maintaining purity and all, all that stuff is just hogwash when it comes down to dealing with the lust of the flesh. It's hogwash. They're they're whitewashing the tr the, the truth or attempting to. But if Yeshua could be tempted, then who am I not to be tempted? But he could overcome. Well, I want to say this to, to Hank. Um, you know, it's a good question. You're asking how Yahushua was able to do that. Well, let's think, let's ponder a couple of things. Three words, in the beginning. If you break those words down, you find out that from the very beginning, Yahushua was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And that it, that it has been written, that it is what the Most High has said from the beginning that he would accomplish the work of salvation to the satisfaction of the Most High. And if, it, if Yah said it, why would it return to him void? Right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. I know, I know this might catch y'all off guard. I, don't, I might be a little surprised, but I too have been tempted. What? <laughs> I, I too have been tempted and and I don't I don't get to live the rest of my life and say that I didn't give in to it. <laughs> so I, I'm in Dang need on. of forgiveness. I have been need in need of it. And you know, so I mean I I, I know I'm I'm I know I might be surprising y'all, you know, but yeah, you know, so but 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 now what's at stake is according to the scripture that we started out with, is this whole notion of being given over to lies given over to a reprobate spirit. And so if, if I don't get control of my flesh today, Even right on. now, and, and be able to understand these desires that are pulling at me, he, he, he says in this spirit, he is going to allow a deceptive spirit to come in and just feed whatever it is that I am embracing that are matters of my flesh. So how do, how do, how do we do it? How do we but, but, but he said, but, but that's the thing about it. In that same scripture that Dante started off with, he he talked about that the people have a form of God, mm -hmm. right? But deny the yeah. power. Power. There are. See, that's huge. We just we skip over those things. So what he's saying is, I've given you the power to overcome. You know, I'm not. He he goes on to say things like, you know, yeah, you're gonna be tempted, but I'm not even going to allow. This is my promise. Right. I'm not going to allow you to be tempted above that, mm -hmm. which you right. won't be able to bear. You know, through my grace and my mercy and the spirit that I have given you, there's not one thing that you're gonna encounter that I I won't be able to give you the strength to overcome. Not one, not one temptation. Okay, so now I gotta believe that. That's what he said. Then he says stuff like the, the goodness <laughs> of the Most High will lead a man to repent. Uh, uh, we got we got to look at all of those things together. So that requires then for us to go back to the original one of the original commandments that Yeshua gave us. He said to believe on Him that was sent. Yeah. To learn of me. And the more we learn, the scriptures say, if I keep my face on him and the more I learn, he said, the more I change from one level of glory to the next level of glory to be like him. I think it's really that simple. That, that if we stay focused on him, you know, go back to the first, first song, you know. Uh, the concept is simple, not the not the actual experiential. Right. I'm just saying the right. concept is simple. You know, when he said, uh, uh, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it up so I, I won't mess it up," but he he talks about, uh, you know, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You go. All there right. So go. so now yeah. now I I, I got to get my counsel. I got to get the right counsel. Then he said, "Noah standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scorn." Then he he tells us how often we all just stay in this thing. He said, "But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night." Yeah, night. Uh, uh, can, I, can I add something to that when you're done? <laughs> yeah. And then he said, "He shall he shall be what? This is the promise. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season." His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Hallelujah.
Y se uh, mandaban yeah. gale a uh, not, not so. so. <laughs> not so. Listen, I, I'm that's, listening. That's listening, listening, right listening some good stuff. <laughs> so, 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 just, just to, to add to it, and, 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 you know, I don't, I don't want to get y'all too worked up, but let me, let me scratch your ears a little bit. <laughs> for, for though we walk, live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh, and using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before Yah. For the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. And as much as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of Yah, and we lead every thought and purpose away away captive into the obedience of Yahusha Hamashiach, the anointed one, being in readiness to punish every insubordinate for his disobedience. When your own submission and obedience as a church are fully secured and complete, that's in Second Corinthians chapter ten. So we are we we are getting a lot of good food and a lot of good stuff here tonight to know what we're supposed to do day and, and night, mm -hmm. day and night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to 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 soothe those itching ears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. <laughs> I, got, I got one. This one, this one, um, Kendall said earlier this week, but when we were talking about something in the in, in the uh feed, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this one with you. It says Psalms 58, that three, the wicked are estranged from the womb, they go astray <laughs> as soon as they are they born. Are born. <laughs> Speaking lies. Speaking lies <laughs> from the day they were born. <laughs> They they born the wicked are estranged from the womb. It's hard. It's really hard to consider that there are some who are born to be wicked. To be wicked. <laughs> to, to be with. I had a hard time long time ago when when I used to hear how read about how the Most High hardened Pharaoh's heart, hardened Pharaoh's heart. Mm. I'm like, why did you just do the chance? He didn't give him a chance. He said, the moment, the moment something went bad, or something, am I still on? Am I, can y'all still be here? Mm, yeah, I mean. I, I think my pro, I'm froze up here. But um, the moment some the moment he did something, it's like the most high, he said he hardened his heart. But the, I I didn't I never realized it wasn't the most high hardened his heart after the fact. Fact is, Pharaoh was born with a hard heart. Mm -hmm. He had a hard heart from the day he came out the womb. And so he he, he have a way of escape. From. Yeah, he, he, it, it is what it is. <laughs> we, we we living it out in real time. Mm -hmm. Real time. When we tell the truth, they hearts get harder. Yeah. You watch. You watch. It's, it's happening because that's what truth does to devils. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's something there. <laughs> see, yeah. see, truth, truth give his people life. It does. It does. And it does. You, you, you need you need to flash your cash app up there. We just give up a love offer right now. For that. <laughs> hey, hang on, hey, that sounds like itching pockets. Not even me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's it, what that's, it, the, that's what the truth does to devils. <laughs> it, that's what it does. It hardens. Let me see. Let me see if I can find that without looking for found from the foundation of the world. He said, "Hold on." Revelation seventeen and eight. He said, "The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation." Foundation of the world. Never had a chance. They, they, <laughs> Never had a chance. I don't even know why you're struggling. Y'all yeah. <laughs> knew when he put them in the world that they would wow. never accept him. You, you you ain't got no choice but to just to tell lies. Wow. Because that's who you are. Yeah. And he knew it before. Which yeah. speaks to the idea that we really don't give the most high the credit don't <laughs> that he deserves. 
that the very wickedness that we are encountering, the wicked people who do wicked things in the earth, the Most High installed them. And he installed, he installed them for his greater will and purpose in, in time, space, earth, and eternity to be revealed at its due time. And that's what, and that's, I'm sorry, I, I thought you were go done. Ahead. Go ahead, go but, ahead. But that's what, that's what a curse is. Wow. To be put under the leadership of another God, another shepherd, so that we can see how we're going to be treated. Listen, as a people, we kept going to the other gods. Yeah. We we kept going to the other nations and doing their traditions. We kept doing it. And he said, okay, I'm a, since you love them and their gods so much, I'm going to give you over to their gods. And then when we get into the book of Enoch, he tells them, he said, I'm going to give you a limit on how many you can kill. Don't go above that. That's my instruction. And they went above what he well, told We saw them. it coming. <laughs> but, but, yeah. we, saw, we saw it coming because when you remember when uh, you know we were ruled by judges and we kept looking around seeing all the fun that the other nations were having, we said, we want a king, we want a king, we mm -hmm. want a king. He said, all right, I'll give you a king. <laughs> but this I'll is what's going to happen? Yeah, this is what's going to happen. This is what he's going to do. He's going to take you. He's going to take your animals. He's going to take your women. He's going to so, take everything you got. Mm -hmm. He's gonna take it. He's gonna wow. take it. So you know. So now we, we're at this place. Now we, we, we've we've had our kings, and we're still lusting after these other guys. He said, "All right, I'll I'll let you have them okay. under a curse. <laughs> you can have them. I'm I'm gonna take my hand off of them. I'm gonna let you see how just they are. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let you see. He said, "Matter of fact, they're gonna be so just to you that they're not gonna have regard to the old or the young." Whether you female or female. He said, that's how much they're going to care about you. He said, you know, and you're going to cry out, but because I, I said that, you know, you wanted them, I'm, a, I'm not going to hear you for a while. So here, here's a scripture for y'all. Um, this is Psalms 118. And um, it starts at verse 15. Shouts of joy and salvation resound in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord performs with valor. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord performs with valor. I will not die, but I will live and proclaim what the Lord has done. We used to say that a lot in the charismatic churches. I will I, I will live and not die. <laughs> That's what you say. Well, uh, and then it goes on verse uh, 18. It says, uh, Yahuwah disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter and give thanks to Yahuwah. This is the gate of Yahuwah. The righteous shall enter through it. I will give you thanks for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. See, while well, David, all this stuff, all this stuff. And then he goes on to say, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is from Yahuwah and it is marvelous in our eyes. What day is that? <laughs> what day is that? <laughs> Let your ears itch for that. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, man. I, I, I'm going back to the wisdom of Solomon again. I was reading the uh, area in there, man, where he was talking about when we were in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. He said, we saw creatures. This is mm -hmm. what he's saying. Is where he said, we saw creatures newly, that had been newly formed that had never been seen before. Mm. And he said, uh, he, they freaked us out. He said, some of them had fire coming from their eyes or whatever. I, I had to go back and look at the descriptions again. This was in the wilderness. So you can, you, and that was to, to, to get our attention. So can you imagine what we're going to see as people mm. in the book of Revelation that's going to that's gonna cause us as stiff-necked as we are? What creatures that we've never seen before, what entities that we're going to see, all these things are going to happen that's going to shake us to our core to make us cry out to the Most High. If, he, if he's saying in his word that he allowed us to see all these strange creatures and all these things before, we, we fought giants in the wilderness, uh, you know, all those things. 
but it's wow. going to it's going to be it's going to be that then some when we come to that place again so we don't realize where we're going with this thing he's going to shake right. us to our core so that we can understand what he's delivering us from wow that's and, and, and it is going to correspond to the to the magnitude of the deception that mm -hmm. we're in exactly the the, the, the the more we're deceived the 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 the, the, the greater these animals are going to be <laughs> greater the shaking <laughs> the greater yeah. the air. <laughs> and 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 the crazy the crazy part of this though is it's like you know, when Paul says that there's there's no height nor depth that can separate us from the most high and his love. I mean, he's the one setting up the parameters for height and depth. <laughs> depth. You know what I'm saying? He's the one. He, he's the one that's doing He's the one that's scaring the bejesus out of us. You know what I mean? He's the one setting these things up. And 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 we all for one response, for one response, daddy. Abba, come get me. Yeah. I need you. Daddy, I, I can't do this without you. I'm not going to live. He wants that response. The same response that we gave him, that we that led us up the first time when he said to Moses, I have heard the cries of my people. Now, can you imagine at that time when we didn't have the the, the the disadvantage in many respects of, of today's knowledge, technology, and all the understandings that to distract us away from the most high. I mean, we had bricks and straw. <laughs> and, and, and onions and leeks. That, and, and leeks and onions. We had that's what we had. And that itself was was at that time before we before we really got an opportunity to, to express us our, our stiff neckness as a people, that was enough to bring us to a place where we were like, oh, oh. We didn't even know who he was crying out for. He said, I've heard the cries of my people. He said they weren't, he didn't say they were crying out for me, but this time around, this time around, he's like, oh, y'all gonna cry for me. Y'all ain't just gonna be crying out to be crying out. Y'all gonna cry. Cry. Man, it's so bad <laughs> that he said he's gonna send us through so much. And not only us, but the world too. Yeah. That there's gonna be there's gonna be a period of time in there. Where men are going to want to die and Damn. try to kill themselves and they can't. Yeah. Think about that. That he's saying, no, you taking this, you taking this, you're going to experience this. Mm -hmm. That death is my grace and my mercy. Mm -hmm. And if I don't want you to die, you're not going to die. In order to experience what it is that I want you to experience, in order for you to see what it is that I want you to see. Just so, like Adam in the book of Adam, the lost book of Adam and Eve. Yeah, he tried to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't pull it off, both of, couldn't pull it off from nothing. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't he get a good nap in? <laughs> then he throw, then they, then he throw himself, he threw himself off a rocky cliff and mm -hmm. just, Adam did a whole lot of he stuff. He did a lot of stuff. And the most I just went down there and he like shook him. He said, go on, get back up. Yeah. Get, up. <laughs> get up, man. Yeah, With no special it. ceremony, he wasn't yeah. hocking all over the place. Get up, man. <laughs> he trapped him up under a big old stone and set him on fire in the cave. And man. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine, though, to, to lose, I mean, to have it all? That's all you know. You you got it all, man. It, 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 the world was set up for you. You came into everything. That's all you knew. You could mm -hmm. see the heavens. You saw the angels. You could see the heavenly tabernacle. You saw all the glory up there. All those things. Saw it. You saw it. You experienced it. You 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 commune daily with Yah himself in the flesh. Speaking of which, since we took we going in the old book down the old book path, <laughs> I do want to share this one thing. In the book of Melchizedek, when at the time Adam hadn't yet been created, but Lucifer had been, and 
uh, in the book of Melchizedek, it talks about how Lucifer was effectively like the the envoy. He was the he was the the harbinger of good tidings from the Most High throughout the universe of everything that the Most High created. So he show up on the scene, and it was it was just glory. He brought he carried the glory of the Most High. But it's it this it there's a the description about the creation all of the Most High's creation at that point where it talks about the harmony of it all. That the, that, the, that the heavenlies and everything the Most High had created, it all harmonized in this beautiful song that 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 no one I know I can can't even begin to imagine, but it was just it was just exhilarating, and it permeated everything the Most High created until Lucifer decided to to rebel, and even and even if you look at that, you look at. If you read the book of Melchizedek and you start reading about, you know, even the Most High's appeals to Lucifer when he realized that oh, he, he's starting to trend toward the darkness and ask questions, ask more questions about the darkness than he is wanting to know who the light is, and 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 how that ultimately led him to creating, a believing his own truth and turning away from the truth, who was the Creator. But this harmony that 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 the Most High created in my mind, in my in my imagination, in my limited imagination, I've always thought to myself, someone hit a foul note, and the Most High got to get the harmony back. He's got to get the harmony back, and if it means tearing up the orchestra <laughs> and, and fine tuning everybody's mandolin and violin and everything if, if he gotta if he gotta hammer out those 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 brass instruments into into tuning properly he's willing to tear the whole orchestra up to get that harmony back what what, what say you guys i'm just, it's just well, my i mean opinion. when you so. think about it from that perspective so so you're you know from that perspective we're saying that the creation itself understood what perfection was Creation itself experienced it, just like Adam experienced it. Creation itself, you know, was joyous, harmonious, enjoyed the presence of the Most High. And when Adam fell, all creation fell with him. And so that's why we get to this point in the scripture where it talks about that the whole creation is groaning and oh. moaning. Looking for the adoption, looking for the, us to be put back in our rightful place so that creation itself can get back to that harmonious position that it was in from the beginning because it knows what it's missing. Great point, Bob. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, that's that's what I see. Great point. Yeah, yeah no, no difference. You know, the all of creation walking perfectly in lockstep with perfection himself. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a, <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. A beautiful thing. <laughs> and we we can't even you know uh, we can't even I I can't grasp it, man. But it's uh... I can't, man. You know, you know, the, you know what was what was that? Uh, we were reading something. It was it might have been. I think it was in one an old book. And the you know the sun was basically asked the most high, let me at him. Let me let me. And the moon came and let let, <laughs> let me let me let me at him. Apocalypse of Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me do it. I'll, I'll, I'll get their attention now. So, so, so basically, the sun and the moon is like, yeah, hey, listen, if this will get us back to where we were, <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. I'll take care. <laughs> you know, so it, just, it gives you some insight into the intensity of their groaning. Mm -hmm. You know, right. to you know, you you think about Adam and Eve one day being in paradise, the next day they're out of it, and it was such a shock to them that they were trying to unalive themselves. It, it, it was such a shock. It was it was such a shock to them, but it was it was an earthquake to creation because yes. you, you go back and you look at at what even at the animals. It says the animals spoke. Mm -hmm. They they had voices. They could talk. 
And so they lost their voices. They lost their ability to even speak when Adam fell. Which is, I mean, it's astonishing. My wife, my wife is gonna laugh. She she's gonna, she gonna be mad, but she she thinks she can talk to animals. She talks to the dog, and they they have conversations and everything. She talks to them. it's it's fun to watch. But they do respond to her, and and so she's like they're having a conversation. And I think to myself, what was it like? What was it? What was that like to be able to just walk out into into the field and 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 see a deer, and the deer not run away, and deer say, "Hey, how you doing?" <laughs> and they go, you know, it's like who, who? I mean, you know, we just we don't give the Most High the credit and the honor that He really deserves. Like it because just, everything in creation understood that right. everything was operating in accordance with the will of the Most High. Everything, and He is good. He is perfect. Yeah, you know, there's there's no such thing as wrong or off or falling short with him. Everything was operating in accordance to how he designed it, and that that created this this safe place for them, this 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 beautiful place for them where they could just be free. I mean, and now you you, you read scripture where you know the Most High promised in scripture one day. You, you're gonna be able to reproduce again. <laughs> one one day, you're gonna, one day you're gonna be able to to produce in all of your glory again. And that's whew. man, and, wow. and that, you know that, and, and 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 he proves he proved it when he created Adam because he he already had names for the animals. Most I did in his own mind, mm -hmm. and so he he brings Adam before him, and say, "Hey, listen, uh, you know, name the animals." Didn't and they wrong. didn't get one wrong. It, what y'all thought, Adam thought, because they were one. They were one in mind. Wow. You know, he was a picture of the son that was to come. You know, I, I don't just do, I don't do my own will. I only do the will of my father. So my thoughts are your thoughts. My ways are your way. You, you, you get what I'm saying? So that's why Adam was created. And so he wow. tested out his own theory just to, just to show us that him and Adam were walking perfectly. And That's then I, after, after he messes up, then he he gives us a promise. He said, "Well, you know, at some point again, the wolf gonna lay down, gonna lay down with the lamb. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the mm. army is coming back." <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about y'all. I mean, to to the degree that I can wrap my head around this, I feel some groaning on the inside of me right yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I can't. I just I, I want us to be there. <laughs> I, I want us to be there, um, but I know we got a whole lot to go through in order for us to get to that place. Yeah, and uh, my only hesitancy, hesitancy about being there is my own growth. I don't yeah. think I'm there yet, and yeah. I want to grow some more. And we got something for us. We got something for you, me. <laughs> yeah, overcome some more things. You know, you, you know, I want to be like Paul. You know, I want to be able to say, "Hey, you know, I fought a good fight." You know. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. That's good, fellas. That's good. So we'll we'll start winding it down. But uh yeah, that was good. Good subject, uh Dante. Uh so y'all yes. y'all praise to the most high. My ears are not itching no more. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all think about uh you know some more subjects and we'll uh we'll decide up on it for the next I, time. I, I... I want to, well, I'll, I'll send it in the chat, but I do have an idea. We'll, we'll talk about it in the chat. Okay. That'll work. Okay. All right. Let me, let me bring it up. Nothing if you ain't prepared to kick it off. Uh, I'm going to kick it off. <laughs> okay. I say you won't have to worry next week. Okay. I'll do the kickoff. I'll do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll set uh, some, some limits on the amount of chapters that you can start it up with. <laughs> All right, man. I, I was good tonight. You guys were the ones that were hitting the books. <laughs> Hey, see, Mac, you have me nervous. I saw that stack of books that was blocking your face. I was like, where did he go? Okay. He, he, coming, he coming to the group with the library of Congress. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go stop picking on me about it. Uh, <laughs> hey, he's prepared. See, one day we're going to be trying to figure something out, man. We ain't going to have the material. We're going to have to go to DMAC. We're going to have to eat. Yeah, you're going to have to do the encyclopedia of <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, but this has been fun, man. Yeah, so absolutely. uh yeah, so we'll uh yeah, y'all willing? We'll we'll do it again uh uh next time. So y'all willing. All right, brother. All right, brother.
All right, Shalom. <laughs> In a shocking 1700s historical document of black Americans, a German professor used the term Negro as a reference to black Jews both in Africa and in Portugal. The author also makes a clear distinction between the black Jews and black Moors. The Moors were largely a distinctly different mixture of black people, most of whom had converted to the Muslim faith. The author candidly points out that the black Jews were specifically targeted for the slave trade, and that the black Moors were intentionally avoided, and that the Negroes also known as black Jews were then sent to the Americas during the slave trade. Get your ebook and audiobook bundle today. Choose from the following three options. Option 1. Get free copies of the original 1700s documents only. Option 2. Get an easy to read edited ebook, plus free copies of the original 1700s document for a low price of $10. Option 3. Get an audiobook for easy listening, plus the easy to read edited ebook and also free copies of the original 1700s document for a low bundle price of $15. Learn the real history they don't want you to know.